Okay folks, um, this video is going to be about identifying supply and demand on a chart and how to pinpoint decision levels. Okay, we've talked about supply and demand, we've talked about support and resistance and the differences between support and resistance and supply and demand. We've talked about finding supply and demand with, within support and resistance zones and how this can be used when trading away from a support and resistance zone. So now we're going to look at um, supply and demand zones itself and how to mark them out, mark them up on, the, on your chart and what to look for. Okay, I'm going to go through a few worded examples. First one is Euro Aussie dollar. Um, we've got a daily chart here. Um, if you ignore these lines for the moment, what I'm looking at is this is a, a, a trade that was taken last week. Um, if we look at this area here, price met demand here. Okay, it has previous history. Price broke through this area, it came back, it met demand, moved up, it met demand here again, demand was consumed, price broke through. So now when it comes back here, I'm looking for demand to become supply. Just like support becomes resistance on the flip side, demand can become supply on the flip side. So now I want to zoom in and find where the major decision levels were within this supply zone. So if I was marking this supply supply zone up on day time frame, I'd be looking at saying, well, somewhere between here and where this level was broken here, there was supply. Okay? Something came but supply came into the market to, to cause price to move down and then to break this level. Now it's highly likely that there is various supply within the supply levels within this zone and that the first supply price is going to encounter when it comes back is going to be near the breakout area okay these are obviously important areas as you can see price got rejected from this area and getting rejected from an area means price met demand okay just like it met demand here because it got rejected from that area it met supply there because it got rejected down from that area okay getting rejected from an area is supply and demand in action okay so it, it met demand there so therefore it must have taken strong supply to overcome this demand. Okay, so that's why I want to be looking for a potential short of this area. Okay, but within this whole area, this whole area is supply. So I want to start zooming in and try and split this area up, this zone, this whole zone up into smaller um, segments. Okay, so if I if I go down to let's go down to one hour. Okay, I want to. Scroll back. Okay, so this is the whole zone. Now, zoom in. Here can we we can see the two previous breakouts. These were the two spikes on the daily time frame. Okay, so price met demand, it bounced, came back, quick bounce again. You can see demand is getting weaker. Price supply becomes it. You can see we have a, a a final small bounce there, and then we break down. We have a final demand point there. We come back up on the retest, the immediate retest, confirm this is supply, where this was demand before, and then we shoot lower. You see where how price left this area, it left it with high momentum, okay? That confirms a strong supply demand imbalance, okay? So within this overall zone here, I'm really focusing on this zone here. You can see all these little wicks here where price was stalling, consuming demand as it came down, final demand was consumed. So I'm interested in this area here that was broken, okay, this was obviously a major decision to break this final bit of demand in this area. This previous um, significant demand level here, these spikes here, and then this whole area here where price was consuming clear demand here, okay. The rest of this zone for the time being isn't going to be of interest, okay, if, if price starts coming up here, then obviously I want to be prepared um, to know where price might, be, might meet supply, but in terms of looking at the way price left this area, this is this is more important. This is where the strongest supply demand imbalance arose from because of the way price left it. I'm always looking for price moving away with momentum, which suggests a strong supply demand imbalance. Okay, so it's within this zone here, which I've marked up, that I'm interested in zooming in and, and seeing if I can find anything, any more information on lower time frames. Okay, so. To recap, we've gone from having this overall level zone here, and now we're looking at this zooming in. We're on one hour time frame, looking at this time, um, this zone here. Okay, so if I zoom into five minute, 
you can't really, you know, five, fifteen minutes really as far as you can go. If you go into one minute, you can see it starts getting a bit too, bit too choppy to make sense. Of. So if I, if I look at fifteen minute first, would have helped. Zoom back. Okay. Here we go. This is a fifteen minute time frame. Okay, you can clearly see the demand points again. And you can clearly see this, and you can see how when you zoom in on a time frame, it, it reveals more information for you. To you, you know, on a daily time frame, you can't see any of this. You can see these wicks here. You can see these demand spikes here, but you can't clearly see what's going on here. That's why when you zoom in, zoom down the time frames, it reveals more information to you that you can't see in the higher time frames. Okay, higher time frames provide useful information, but so do lower time frames. Okay, you've got to get used to not thinking like what most people would tell you that all stick to the higher time frames it's easier it provides more useful information it's not true at all every time frame will provide you with information that you can't see in another time frame okay that's why i always start from daily and i zoom in i use m1 just as frequently as i use higher time frames okay so here we can see this zone still but here we can see more information here we can see how price met demand here it rose and that met supply here, okay. This supply here was former demand here, where we had the final, the final sort of last flourish of demand that was consumed in this spike up to here. We've broken down. We've met some demand here. We've come back up. We've confirmed this on the immediate, essentially the immediate retest as supply. And look, look at the way price left that. That's a strong supply demand demand. So, you know, this zone in particular. I'm very interested in this. You know, this is a strong supply demand imbalance arising out of here. But this zone overall you can see this was the final the final demand push was met with a supply here so that's the source this is what I would call the source of supply that led to the breakout of this whole area okay I'm interested in these still in these kind of wicks here and you know they're dotted all around within this kind of overall zone okay final time frame I'm going to scroll down to is five minutes because one minute just doesn't make too much sense on this pair Second of July. okay if I zoom in a bit Okay, again, we can clearly see the demand was met. We can see the supply. This, this led to the strong move away, which led to the breakout. Okay, we had a, a little slight final push here where demand was consumed. And then you can see within here, we had the final overall demand flourish before moving down. And it was met by supply here. Okay, and we've got lots of former demand wicks demand here being consumed in each little kind of zigzaggy approach down. Okay. And you can clearly see there's a little midpoint here which which corresponds to which corresponds to this daily demand here okay you can clearly see sort of the little little pivot there okay so on on the first retrace you know remember what I've said from a previous video that the first time price comes back to a supply demand zone it stands the highest chance of still having that same supply demand imbalance okay so on the first time back to this area I'm looking for, for the same supply demand imbalance I supply exceeding demand to be existing in here okay but overall I'm looking at this smaller this this overall zone here within this bigger daily zone okay this is the first area okay there might be more supply out here within here but this is this is the first area price is going to hit obviously on the retrace so this is the first area I'm going to be um, strongly interested in. Okay, so obviously we can see all the prices here. We've marked it all up. So if I go back to the future and see what actually happened, we can see that you know this is the overall bigger zone. Bigger zone. This is the overall smaller zone. Just adjust this slightly. Okay, so this. Zoom in. This was the overall daily zone. This was the smaller zone, and then this was the more immediate zone of interest. Okay. So this is five minute time frame. As you can see, what happened? Price came back, and it reacted within within this smaller zone, pretty much very near that midpoint of that zone. But this smaller zone here. So, you know, we've narrowed down a big daily zone from 21s, okay, 1.23 to 1 to 1.24 to 
40 down to a much smaller zone here and then we've even pinpointed it even smaller to this is where it's likely to meet supply on the first retrace and, and look at the reaction you know in terms of the supply demand imbalance still being present you know, a huge reaction there okay so you know the actual trading isn't what's important here it's about just finding the likely supply points within and the likely supply decision levels within a supply demand zone from a higher time frame okay Okay, the next um, chart is gold. Um, so we look at these two areas here. You can see this is a rally base drop. This is a rally base drop. This would look better on a, a lower time frame in terms of the basing here. But you can see these are clear supply areas. They both led to a clear move away from price in the short direction. Okay. So again, I want to look, zoom in. Um, I can, you know, it's easy to mark them up on the daily time frame. I'm going to mark the, the, the highs of each zone, and I look at you know the previous, the pre previous, um, just previous bar closes and opens, just to sort of put a rough um, range on the supply zone. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time marking up zones on daily time frames. It's not you know do you include wicks, bar closes, bar opens. <laughs> You know, people can get quite anal on how to define a support resistance zone and supply demand zone. It's not the most important thing is how you define it on the daily time frame, it's how you find the, 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 the decision points within the, the zone. Okay, that's the most important thing, and that's where you're going to find where the actual supply and demand pockets are and what the supply and demand represent. It represents the institutional order flow, you know, the big pro money. So that's what you want to focus on finding, not do I define it using this bar high and that bar low here on the on the higher time frame? Okay. So I'll start with the lower zone. I'll zoom in. End of April. Okay. Now, this is the you know the turning point on the daily time frame. So you can see here, there's a clear key area here it met supply here it met supply here this was overcome had a, a small demand spike here and then price moved away very quickly and then didn't look back off this so this is a very clear this is a clear level that price had to break in order to break out of this zone okay and the way it broke out of it tells us that you know this is a major uh, form of demand supply level it was a key level that was broken therefore they've got to be you know, very likely going to be supply on the return back to this level. Okay, we can see the move originated from this spike here in terms of on, on, on this bar, uh, and then overall the whole source is up here. Okay, so if I zoom into 15 minute, again, you can clearly see the importance of this level at such a key level. You can see more clearly what happened here. Remember what I said on about on the last chart about zooming in provides more useful information on each time frame. Um, we can see, see price broke up here. It met demand briefly, demand consumed, it met supply there, this kind of decision level here, and then it had the big breakout, okay? And this supply here hasn't been retested at all yet. Um, if I zoom into five minutes, Again, you can see the whole process just just as clear. It broke through, immediately retest demand, supply at the top. That's the source. It comes back. We have a, a level here. We have a you know we see a flip there. We can see obviously these two spikes, and this is the source of the breakout. You know, or the immediate breakout is, is here, and you can see when price came down here, it came back up, and the breakout on this bar here was caused by the supply coming in here. So. You know, really, I'm going to be marking this this whole zone here. So, you know, that's going to be my my key zone, my first key zone of interest, where I'm looking for price to meet supply. Okay, I'm looking for the price action on this zone, or if I decide to limit order, you know, how I'll trade it. It's not important at this point. It's just identifying the um the decision decision points within the supply demand zone. Okay, um, one minute is going to be particularly useful. I can't remember where it was now. Oh, here we are. Oh, we actually got a price gap on my chart, which is handy. Um, so one minute is not useful. <laughs> okay, so if I scroll forward again. Okay, so that's the lower zone. Now, whilst we're in this, so 
you know, these are the key levels. This is the zone I'm first and foremost going to be interested in in terms of when price comes back to it. Okay. Now, if I go back and look at the upper zone, right, get back out to one hour. Okay, one hour time frame. Again, you know, this was more choppy than the last one. It's not as clear cut on this time frame, at least. You can see the source of the overall move came in here, overcame this massive demand move. It's been retested once, and that means it's consumed some supply in here. But again, you can see the strength of it that time. It's come back, and again, we've met supply in here, and then we've had to break out. So you can see you know, this level here, and price met supply in this, so that's why I've marked this zone. And obviously, there's not much interest in here at the moment, but within this zone here, you can see you know the source of it, and then the retest as well. So we'll go down to five minute. Zoom out. Again, you can see even more clearly on here, you can see how key this level is in terms of what, you know, supply, demand, breakout, test of supply. Okay, and you can obviously we met supply in here, which was on this bottom of the same was retested to confirm supply, and then price moved away quickly from there. Okay, so that's why this level, this zone is all important. Um, We've got a, kind of a mid zone here, price was chopping around, there's not much of interest in there. But the top zone is where obviously we had this, the overall source of the move, started the move, and then it's been retested once. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm interested in this zone, and then this one um, if we get up here. Okay, so now I'll just scroll forward, I'll keep it on five minutes. Okay. So this is the first approach, this is the lower zone. Remember I was saying basically I was interested in this lower zone. And you look what happened, price met supply exactly at the edge of this zone. I moved away, came back, had one more test. You know, remember with each test of supply, it's consuming supply. We're on a big uptrend in, in gold, so you know, expecting massive moves from this wouldn't have been wise. Um, and you can see a big bullish move comes in. We can we consume we've now consumed the supply in here. We we test it as demand. We come back up. We break the whole zone. We test the top of the zone as demand. Supply become in demand, and then this this is the upper zone, the upper daily supply zone. Again, I said I was first and foremost interested in this. Again, we act, we act right right at the edge. We're going back to former supply turn demand. We um, consolidate around. You know, notice how these former decision points are respected again either side in in the future, which isn't shouldn't be as much of a surprise because obviously these are these are the zones that the big orders being placed at. So if they're placed there in the past, they're going to be placed there in the future. You know, people will think in the same way in terms of how they place orders. So you can see, you know, we came back again. Again, we met supply briefly. We came back up to the edge of the zone here. Met supply, moved away. You know, retested that one again. We moved away, and then what, let's see how price eventually comes back. You see the move away from that top zone of, was essentially a, you know a very big move there. And then obviously we've had a you know a bit of a parabolic move coming up, and we've had to break out. Okay, but you can see the reactions from the two, you know, from this area here, which is the first and foremost part of that zone and then this this area here which led to you know sustained move down before the breakout upwards in, in line with the current gold trend. This is uh, a trade which I showed on Forex Factory. Um, this was a long trade on, on pound New Zealand dollar. Um, this daily area you see resistance resistance, resistance, breakout, coming back. This was a key area that was broken in the direction of the current trend, okay? What was the current trend? Um, and I'm looking for a long, just a, you know, a short term long move of this area and you can see the FLR is going to be this demand, price met demand here uh, and it has since confirmed it as supply. Um, so yeah, this is the first time back to this key daily day level. So I, I want to see where the, where the demand came in to cause this breakout around the SR and that's where I expect there to be demand and I want to be looking to take a, a long trade of this area okay so I'll see on this time frame I can see see the area but I, I can't see anything about where demand came in you know somewhere within this bar okay so yeah, I'm going to zoom in as you can see you see price met supply here you see how it's actually 
very choppy around here then we had to break out again you know it's within here you can see that the decisions to break out were, were made within this area but I, I can't really see much on this on this hourly time frame uh, so I'll go down to 15 again very choppy you know, the cross pairs can be very choppy we can see supply on this time frame price met demand it came up broke above this area here you know this is the blues the daily um, SR I, I, I drew uh, and then it broke up okay so the decision to break this SR must have been you know somewhere within here okay five minute time frame okay so now I can see on this time frame remember the blue is the SR that was broken you can see the SR history here we had supply price came up broke above it came back tested this 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 line here is demand and then broke up or it broke up a small retest here but we can see that you know the SR here in terms of this flip here that was clear supply that had to be overcome so we expect demand when price comes back to here okay how do we define the edges of the zone well we can see that we had little retest here of this area here this is a previous support that price had to overcome we had to overcome here you can see the strong demand that was met in this bar here so this is where we're going to say you know, this is the source of the breakout you know the most likely source of the breakout yeah we see the overall move started you know down here but where did find price find a significant supply demand imbalance to lead to the breakout the first area is, is here we can see the history level of this area okay and then we can see we had demand again here and here um, and then again around this area here you can see how price moved away from it you know that suggests a strong supply and demand imbalance from here after consuming supply here with, via these two wicks so one minute is going to be choppy but I'm going to zoom in okay now you, you can see very clearly now I know it's a choppy time frame you can see the supply met here on this SR flip it broke out came back below before look at this bar here that's pure demand coming in there from rejection of this area here that's why you know, this is the source of the breakout okay price broke out the SR we came we retested it okay we broke out and, and then we had a demand here and look at how price moved away it didn't look back okay green 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 bars okay so we can see that price rejected supply here so this is why this is going to be where I'm going to place my orders around okay I chose a limit order here and the order went above here you know, eight nine pit spread at the time not ideal and um, my stop loss went below here you can see you know we're talking about a 24 to 37 you know 24 talking about a 13 plus spread plus a little buffer either side like one pip buffer either side so, so you're talking about 15 pip stop loss trading around a daily SR by zooming into one minute I mean you know this is not how typically people will play um, you know first first return to a daily SR one you know they won't even look for limit orders most of the time they'll be looking for some specific bar to form some confirmation if it forms in the right time of day in the right format they might then trade it um, in a mechanical fashion or if the people usually if they do place limit orders they'll be you know putting an entry looking at the SR and using averages between highs and lows of, of bars within the SR to calculate the entry point and looking at say a, a stop loss below this swing here okay you know this swing here has nothing to do with this area here just like these bars here and these bars here in terms of the average of the bars of the SR have nothing to do with where the price is going to find demand you can find demand on your chart just by looking at the supply and demand zone but people just don't have that level of, level of knowledge okay so as you would have seen from my forex factory post the order got hit price met demand as we expected it would where uh, we expected it would within the, the zone we expected it would and then you know remember this daily SRs the the FLR target okay you know I'm only looking for a quick move here I class this as a scout but it's a you know it's a 1.4 risk reward um, you know this is a, a you know a drop based drop essentially you can see how price left this zone that's the clear supply zone around this SR 
that I marked because obviously I didn't you know mark it completely accurately. I'm just just like I do with daily um, supply zone and demand zones. I'm just marking them roughly and then zooming in to pinpoint um, where the supply and demand is. We can see this is a clear supply. So I um, I took profit here. I'm entry being here plus here plus spread. A very simple high probability trade based all all around a, a daily daily SR. Okay, well that concludes the three examples. Um, hopefully. It's come across okay. What I would recommend is just go go and look on your charts. You know, go and look at your daily SRs. Go and look at your daily supply zone and zoom in. Find where you think the major decision levels are. You know where it, supply hasn't been tested yet, and then go and zoom forward and see how price did react. Okay, and you'll soon pick up. Um, you'll soon spot where the, the true supply and demand is, or supply and demand is, and where the true, um, you know, the large order flow is. Okay.